Against a knife-wielding aggressor, having a tool with more distance is your very best friend. Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. It's a great lesson, but a heck of a doozy out of Columbia, South Carolina. Palm pepper spray has recently reformulated for even more effect when you bless the deserving with the hot sauce. Palm is what I use between a harsh word and a gun and encourage everyone to do likewise. The encounter is already in process when we get here. This guy is clearly having a mental break. Clearly, maybe it whacked out on drugs or something like that and threatening people with a pocket knife. We have audio of what happens. Let's listen in. That's all. And he was saying he was gonna stab people because he wanted twenty dollars. At the end of this, the police did an evaluation with their crisis response team with this guy. Decided that he needed uh, a hospitalization and mental evaluation. I have not seen anything regarding charges that have been filed against this guy. I think perhaps they chose not to charge him at all. The guy who whopped him over the head with the uh, you know pylon thing was a military veteran. He gave a an interview about it. I put a link in it to the description. It's a pretty good interview as well. Okay, question for you. What would you have done here? Would you have gotten involved or would you have gotten the heck out of the area? I don't think either one is a wrong answer. I'm curious which one you would have chosen. There's absolutely nothing requiring you to be present at this if he is not targeting you in particular. So rather than filming it, rather than standing around in the back to wonder what the heck is going on, I can't tell you enough, get away from this. Please get the heck out of the danger zone as fast as possible. Either do something to end it or get the heck out of there. Now this guy in the red coat, brave man trying to get in there and help this guy, but very dangerous as well. Cause you notice this guy is like all over the place and he's clearly not in his right mind. He's clearly what we would call contaminated thinking, high emotion, non-compliant person. So that would be a time in our de-escalation kind of paradigm for emergency discussion only. Drop the knife, drop the knife, drop the knife. You really can't reason with a guy like this. This would also be a time right here if you had something like an OC spray to, to from a distance, 10 feet, 12 feet away, to hose this guy down with the hot sauce, see if you can get him to drop the knife and get him into custody before he hurts someone. But of course, I would only do that if you have lethal cover yourself. Now, I'm not saying have a gun out and on the guy, though I think you probably could have a gun out on the guy. I'm not saying you necessarily have to in this moment, but if you've got that yourself or you can maintain some distance from him or whatever, that's wise. Instead, a big problem that I see here is the guy in the red coat is going to compress his discretionary time. He's going to, going to, you know, close with this guy to see if he can like, just like with his proximity, get the guy to back down and calm down, which I guess that's not, you know, it's not a great strategy at all. And, and again, as this guy then gets closer to somebody with a knife in his hand and is continuing to be a threat, he's going to end up swiping at him with the knife when the guy tries to grab it. Quite frankly, that failed grab attempt was very dangerous and probably put it to the place where this guy should have been shot in this particular case. I think that certainly would have been justifiable to shoot that guy in that moment that he's swinging a knife at somebody and probably really absolutely needed to be shot in that particular case, which is a good reason to maintain your discretionary time, everyone, to just stay at distance. There was really no good reason to close distance with this guy if you don't have the magic ninja kung fu skills in order to actually affect that disarm. And, and even if you do, very dangerous to do. Far better to just open up space, wait for the 
cops to get there and outsource your violence. Let them deal with this guy. Now, I think it's it's heroic for what our veteran did here, uh, but I'm going to say this. Sometimes you do have to use an environmental weapon. And, you know, he uses this, this Q thing, you know what I mean? This little pylon, I forget what the heck it's called, but you get my point. And sometimes you're just going to have to use a weapon that you find in the environment in order to defend yourself. I would have far rather he had something on his person. I think an OC spray would have been a better choice here because it's far less injurious, right? So, so if you whop someone over the head with this big heavy thing, you're highly likely to put them in the hospital with that. That's gonna highly likely split his scalp, put him in the hospital. That's considered deadly force. So again, if I have the option to do something less lethal than that, I would definitely do so. Though, I think it's 100% justified what he did here because again, the guy's a deadly threat to everybody around. I also think he took a very good opportunity for an ambush here. That he went behind the guy, waited till the guy wasn't paying attention to him, and then whopped him upside the head with this thing, and it proved to be very effective. Although I will say, what's your plan if it didn't work? What's your plan if you missed or if you, you know, hit him and it didn't make him drop the knife or anything like that? Thankfully, it did work. But what's your plan B? You should have a plan B and a plan C. And if you don't have those plan B and C, you're far better off to get the heck out of there, get everybody away from him, wait for the cops. I think that these guys are studs. I love the guy in the green, uh, you know, hoodie showing up, trying to kind of corral the guy and then grabbing the knife. I don't have any problems grabbing the knife whatsoever. There's tons of witnesses around. Nobody's going to worry about fingerprints on it or anything like that. Why were you holding it? I was holding it because I was trying to keep it away from him. Here's the knife that he was using. I've got somebody on video. We've got surveillance footage, done tons of people around. No problems with that whatsoever. And securing that knife really, really useful. If you don't want to secure it though, kick it out on away from this guy. Then these guys who are here, you need to hold this guy and keep him down. So I think having some grappling training, having some understanding of how to maintain a hold of somebody, incredibly important. Finally, I want to say these officers, they did a pretty darn good job of getting this guy into custody without beating the tar out of him here. You know, they, they did a pretty good job communicating with each other, overpowering him, getting him in cuffs. And then kudos to them. Okay, this guy needs medical help is what he needs. He doesn't need to go to jail today. He needs to get some, some psychiatric help. Let's get him to the hospital, start him on some medication, see what's going on in his system. If he's got drugs in his system or whatever, get it out of his system, get him the help and get him on his way. Kudos to them for that. I do think these kinds of incidents like this where police officers do the incredibly right thing, don't end up shooting somebody didn't need to be shot, getting him the help they need and sending them on their way happen every day and kudos to them. So big things here, don't sit around watching this. Uh, you know, kind of stuff. Get the heck out of there if you can. Number two, an environmental weapon is a thing, but gosh, I'd rather have purpose-built tools. Number three, maintain your discretionary time. Keep distance away from the guy. Distance buys you time. Time buys you options. Use it to cover your ASP.